Hello, hello, and welcome to my channel. My name is Yudi, and I go by Yudi on the Glow here on my other social media platforms. So make sure you guys subscribe and follow me there. Today's video is all about the Africa Magic Viewer Choice Awards, AMVCA. Now I have to admit, I have very mixed feelings around talking about red carpets, given the current climate of the world and what's been made more public and still been ignored. But I feel like this is an opportunity to use my platform to showcase African designers and many other talent from different countries in Africa. Though I won't be able to get to all the looks, I will be talking about red carpet and cultural day looks that stood out most to me as the best dress and the rest. Stay tuned. For this award show, I believe the theme was wearable art. That being said, I have to start with Ghanaian actress Nana. She always brings it every single year. Before I was even familiar with the award show, I always saw her looks. So for her look, she went for a three-dimensional look with, with a perfect flesh tone illusion underneath. From what I've heard, when she was coming up with the idea to make this dress, the fabric didn't exist. So she had to get the fabric made and 3D printed in China, then come back to have it pieced together. And she showcased the dress two different ways. One as is with a shell like purse. And then she also wore it with this multi-face mask. And masks like these will always make me think of Hindu deities and futuristic fashion. Now, when it comes to the designers who worked on this garment, there's been a little bit of controversy. But from my understanding, Nana's policy is either you get tagged or you get paid. I'm gonna leave it there. So credits of this dress from what I know go to Yolanda. And just to take a quick step down memory lane, Nana is the reason that I was introduced to Gurave Gupta's designs. In 2020, she wore this design that for me was an iconic and memorable moment stitched in my memory. So she's up there with my best dress. Next, I have to talk about Osas. Osas never misses for me. In fact, it was seeing her look and Nana's look that I said, I have to share the news. I have to do something. Those are the two women who really inspired this video. So when it comes to Osas, she's always gonna be serving looks. As soon as I saw this dress, immediately I was screenshotting and saving this picture. I was so drawn into this look because everything about it, every detail, every line was perfect. It wasn't until some hours later that I saw VK James describing the process of making this dress. I said, of course, it'll be one of her dresses. One thing about it, you can tell that VK really has a special touch and puts thought and time into all of the pieces she makes. And her creativity and work ethic is undeniable once you see the final project. So, Osas is always gonna slay. I believe her and VK had a best dress last year or the year before, I'm not entirely sure. But with the many lines of this dress, I feel like it's very easy for this to go left or to be too busy or to look somehow. It's still done and fits impeccably. This is one of my best dress. Next up, I have Uche Montana. First saw her picture from that side. I said, Factra, is it? <laughs> I will say with the styling, the hair, the makeup from the side, she does, does resemble Phaedra Parks. Let me know if I'm alone in that thinking. But this gown, this gown is so beautiful. I feel like this is how mesh should be done. And currently with it being prom season here, I'm hearing all of the stories of what, what went wrong, what was ordered and what people got. And honestly, I feel like to get this look, whether it be for prom or another occasion, I feel like more and more people should look into Nigerian, Ghanaian and, uh, and other African bespoke tailors to really get the look and get the look done well. And why I feel like this look works, it's the perfect balance of metallics to whites to that wine color added in. And it's also the perfect balance of beading to mesh to feathers. This can go tacky very quickly, but Vicky James really has the eye to hone and mesh everything in to where it doesn't look that way. And continuing with designs from VK for this award show, we have Toke. Toke is wearing this number that again, I feel like the fit is amazing. However, for me, although I do find her best dress, this is something that I feel like I've seen before. Immediately when I saw this, my mind went to Iman at the Met Gala some years ago, whatever the theme was, Heavenly Places or something like that. However, regardless of me feeling like I've seen this before, I feel like this is probably the best deliveries of this type of look. Now let's talk about Simi Dre. Simi Dre is taking it. It's something about this look that's giving album on the way. And then let's talk about placement. She has these raindrop like jewels that kind of form a skirt at the bottom. But then we also have the one jewel on the nip, just one. And the other thing for me, I'm always here for a molded bodice. I love everything about this look. The she even gave visuals with small rings. What else can we ask for? The look she's wearing is by Mide World. This suits her so well. I love it, it's different. I feel like many people wouldn't go for a style like this. This is something that she delivered and delivered well and really suits her. I'm not sure if I would have the same feeling if someone else wore this exact same look. So this 
This is up there for me. And while we're on Simi, let's talk about her cultural day look. When I first saw this look, I saw it from the hips up and I was instantly in love. I love a good black against ivory, a little bit of texture with the velvet in the bodice, and I love the head. The head piece is giving me tea party, Kentucky Derby, just something of that nature where you want to go all out. You want to bring a little bit of pomp. Now, when I saw more of this look, I fell even more in love. This look was meant to pay homage to Nigeria and represent the need for union amongst tribal divisions. After seeing her post what it represented and then also seeing the full outfit, it was only then that I noticed the headpiece was in the shape of Nigeria. And from the skirt, we're really seeing the natural beauty that Nigeria has to offer from its greenery to its palm and raffia trees. And a few more things in the bottom half. If you pick up any more references, please let me know. But overall, I feel like this is a very thoughtful and sentimental look that was communicated through fashion. Now, while we're on tribal looks, let's continue with Hawa Magaji. She is dressed as an Edo queen or bride, and I love that she dedicated to this look. I know there's another actress that also came as an Edo bride, Edo queen. And when it comes to Edo culture, I love seeing that crown. I love seeing the curls, even the napkin. I love that she really committed to this look. Next up, we have Tana. I believe she's Igbo, but her look is representing for the North and spotlighting Hausa culture. I particularly enjoy this look because I don't see how to culture showcase as much in my day to day. Next up we have Tamika and her look represents for the Fulanis. And the thing that I can't ignore, every picture she took in this look, she is glowing head to toe. Next up we have Benita and I have to say, this is one of my top looks. She's Uruba, but her dressing is Shakiri repping for Delta State. When I was listening to her talk about this look, she described it as being Midas as a woman. And she believes she's currently in her golden season, so in her golden hour. And I feel like that checks out. It encaptures the entire look for me. And to take it a step further, her look was a his and her look, and she had her cousin Neo join her for this look. Even Neo's skin almost looks like clay. It's the headdress, it's the quarrel. It's even the beating. They both won best dress of the night, and that was well deserved, in my opinion. But with that said, um, Ibibio, Epic, Cross Rivers, where are you people? What? You know what? It is well. It's okay. It's okay. Next up, I have actress Idea. Now, I feel like this is a look may be easily misunderstood. This is a look that may not be in the top of many people. But for me, I appreciate the manipulation of this fabric, this puffer, and how it is done. It's very daring and it's a risk that she took. And with this look, one, I can see it at New York Fashion Week. I can see it on the runways. I can see people actually wearing this in the States when they want to have that pop. Now, I also peeped the Loewe balloon shoes. I feel like the shoes may be a little bit too much with the puffer coat, but overall, I can appreciate the risk that she took, knowing that many wouldn't understand this look. And her dress is by Imagine by Bukola. And next up, I have a Dunia Day. Now for me, anytime I see white and ivory, my mind goes to Scaparelli and it goes to old Hollywood glam. I would say this look for me leans more towards old Hollywood. However, I feel like this dress looks even better in motion. That is where you really see the movement of the train and the bottom half of this dress. I like it. Some may think it's safe. For me, this is a beautiful and classic look. Dressed by Anne Cranberry. Now, Bisola, again, another classic and elegant look. This was done to perfection and fits her body so well. The styling complemented it as well. I love that we have a little train. And nothing about this is quiet, but it's also not loud. It makes a statement. It's almost like a, it's almost like a quiet flex, but not too quiet. I really do love this look on her. She's styled by Damola and the dress is Somo by Somo. Let's talk about Toyin Abraham. This look is the perfect amount of extra. And I feel like there are not too many other people that I can think of who could pull this off. I can think of a couple, but not too many could pull this off without looking like they're doing too much or being over the top or couldn't decide on it look. And I feel like this fits her personality, at least from what we see on the screen, to a T. I love this look on her. She's wearing Erica Moore. Nick, let's, let's get to the guys. Let's get to the guy. So now we have RMD. RMD. What can I say? I'm always gonna love what he's wearing. He took his spin with this purple aflata, and I love 
both of his looks. For the purple Akbara look, he was styled by Swanky Jerry, and the outfit is by Digi and Kola. And I believe this night he received a Lifetime Achievement Award, or something in that realm. Don't quote me on that. But I'm always going to enjoy seeing him. And back to Neo. This look for me is truly art. The first words that came to mind when I saw it was Armor of Pearl. And there's something so poetic about it, like a bleeding heart or knife to the heart. It's almost Shakespearean. The pearling and beating detail on this piece is insane. There's a lot of attention to detail. On the back and on the legs, you have a continuation of red beating that makes it feel like this is someone returning from battle, someone who was fighting for love. This look tells a story or makes you want to create and romanticize a story to match this look. For me, this is fashion poetry. He was styled by Gabrielle Anthony. Next up, we have Larry Hector. And one thing about it, any anything that is matador or mariachi aligned in terms of a heavily beaded or embellished crop jacket with structure, I'm going to enjoy it. So I really do like this look. I feel like it's balanced. It suits him. And this is by Wosu. Wosu. And you guys, please excuse me with some of these pronunciations. I'm trying. Next up, we have Uti. And I love the hair. And I'm loving the suit. Grading an effect and embellishment of this blue to red, creating a purple in between, is something that I really enjoyed. Now, this look also came with a cape. But I'm not too fond of the cape. I like it without. But he is still very well dressed, in my opinion. Also, I'm going to have to talk about Yemi. Cracks. This man is sitting like royalty. It's the details, it's the layers, it's the fabrics. It looks like we have velvet, beading, or feathers, or a showcase fabric, the hat, the glasses, the curls, the jewelry. Everything about this look is complete. It's complete in my opinion. Outfit is by Jen Rewa. Next up, we have Toby Bakray. And I like this look because it's simple and to the point. I feel like this is something if you want to lay low, you want to take it easy, this is the look you can put on. And I feel like this is a look that men who may not push that boundary as much or may not be as comfortable in fashion risk this is a look they can wear with comfort while switching up their normal routine so i really do like the calmness of this look i think it's done well now i know this award show isn't nollywood only it's supposed to be for nigerian talent and african talent but where is everyone else i need the other countries to fight back like nana can hold it down but but still i know a lot of movies come out of south africa is there a name for the film industry in south africa i just want to know where is everybody at and also, if you've been enjoying so far and haven't already subscribed, go ahead and subscribe. I'll wait. Okay, let's continue. Next, let's talk Shoma. Shoma came with three looks. We're gonna start on the second look, okay? Okay, we'll come back to that first look. But with the second look, it's giving Poison Ivy, but in all black. I feel like it's done well. This is a look that looks amazing in the photos as well as the videos. This dress is by Weezer Crumb Franklin. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right. You guys help me out. Again, done so well, and I feel like there's a level of control to this. Without it looking all over the place, without it looking messy, I really do enjoy this look. This look really drew me in. And as I was doing my research and collecting all the pictures for this video, she came and dropped a third look. This third look is by thought by Leo or Lyo. As someone who's not very attracted to this shade of blue, I love everything about it. Even with this feathered boa or shawl over the shoulders, I love this look head to toe and the work on it. I'm not I'm not mad at her. And honestly, I can't blame her because if I, if I had two looks like this and the opportunity to wear both in the same night, I would do it. Why not? So I believe she wore this to the after after party. Next up, I have Tiana, and she's also in my best dress. And she's in my best dress for several reasons. I understand this look and I get the shape. For me, this is very avant-garde and matching the theme of wearable art. And one of the things with fashion that I keep my mind open to is that many risks that people may take, people may criticize or be somehow with it. However, somehow that same look is understood when it's now on the runway. So for me, I completely get what she was going for. Um, this kind of reminds me of Gary Sack. <laughs> However, this look did come with wings and have blue, had blue corset lacing in the black that I did not care for at all. And as I was reading some of the details on the dress, I think it would have been a nice touch. It, it was drawn back to a Nigerian product or had some type of link to an African country. Next up, we have Funke, another VK James look. This is classic, this is elegant, and I feel like this is something that's hard to miss in. So I think it's, it's another solid and classic look. Now we have Tasha wearing Abba's woman. Now, I feel like she took this to a place that many wouldn't go. And she really committed to the look, and that is why I like the look is definitely gonna get people talking. Now, I will say it is bordering a little bit of Maria Antoinette. And personally, right now, I don't wanna hear anything about people eating cake. Part of why I feel a kind of way about the Met Gala this year. 
if you know you know i like this look now do you think the bag was overkill i feel like it would have been better if it was like a micro nano bag to not clash as much with the corset already on the dress i enjoy the commitment to this look now let's transition to the rest now these are either not my favorite or things that could have been my favorite with small changes let's discuss now this first one i feel will ruffle a few feathers because i saw it was a crowd favorite however beauty and she's wearing imagine by bucola i feel like this dress has that overall impact it has the drama volume with its color with the styling but for me what killed this look for me were the close-up shots it just felt like a lot of fabric bunched together without much direction and structure and I saw clips of the miniature pleating that went into this fabric and I just feel like it really didn't showcase the effort and craftsmanship that may have gone into it. So this is not a favorite for me. From, from far away, it really does give you that look. But when you're close and really looking at the details, it doesn't look well made to me, in my opinion, respectfully. Next up, we have Lori Kedji wearing a dress by Erica Moore. And one thing about it, I love a good orange. This is a color that I'm very much so attracted to that is very hard to miss for me but something about it feels like she did not commit to the look it looks like the hem of the ruffles were supposed to be raw i wish that was exaggerated or committed to more and then i also kind of feel like the styling is off and i definitely feel like the bodice loses me it's something about that gym in the middle and how the bodice is created that kind of feels like an afterthought or not much thought was put into it something about the styling is really throwing me off this is something that was a miss for me but i think could be saved with the right styling next up we have yabo she was styled by greek luxury i feel like this look aged her it looks matronly it looks mother of the bride it looks like it looks like 60th birthday celebration i i'm just <laughs> i'm just not a fan i feel like the shoulder flowers and the um side petals on the hip really age and date the look it's a complete no to this brown train or cape whatever's happening here it clashes too much with the silver and black if i were to make changes on this dress we would, we would get rid of this brown train cape whatever that is and can we just reduce the flower just reduce the flower if anything i preferred her cultural day look over this any day anytime next up we have saga and saga is not dressed bad i repeat he is not dress bad i actually enjoy this look however i feel like the details get lost in this color when you're looking from afar i feel like the details that went into the silhouette and shape get lost in this pink gingham print whatever this is i would want to see the same look in ankara native prints damas an iridescent fabric anything but this pastel pink because i feel the pastel pink really doesn't show the detail in this look because this is a really nice look i would need to change the fabric and change the color otherwise saga did his thing i just don't like the color next up we have a buka and um when it comes to fashion this is not a regular person for me i hold him to a very very high standard okay especially after he showed up to banky w's wedding he's um a thousand i won and completely changed how people wore it so i think this is done well it comes off like a baby blue and most i think it's um white polka dots okay. who know maybe he wants to be chill maybe he wants to have a low-key day not every time do you come and break the internet but for him i'm used to that that is what i want to see so for this look i feel like it's done well but it left me wanting more he is someone whose fashion i look forward to seeing and this one you know i'll allow it i'll, I'll let it pass but next time please <laughs> Right. And next up we have Elo in an outfit, um, an outfit by Jerford Man. And the first thing I thought when I saw this look, do you guys remember that wedding that never ended by the actors who got married who worked for Tyler Perry? This is where my mind first went when I saw this. And that might be why I'm very critical of this look. For whatever reason, I'm not sold. Like he is not selling me on this look. And maybe it's that I need a little bit more structure in the pants. Maybe I need more detailed pleating. Something about this is off to me and I'm not being sold on it. I feel like this same look could be worn on someone else and I would like it, I would get it. But for whatever reason, I feel like it's lacking structure on the bottom and it's lacking balance and it needs more attention to its pleating detail and structure. Something about it, I, I it's just not a favorite. Next up, I have Tamike. And I feel like I can go either way for this look. From certain angles, when you just see the half blazer, I really do enjoy this look. But when you can see the blazer plus the added train, then recognize that these are pants. 
it feels a little bit off with the train for me. I think the train is what throws me off. However, even though I have mixed feelings, I feel like this look looks best in motion and it also looks best without the train. I'm here for the half blazer, but the train plus the blazer throws me off. I'm sorry, Vicky. So that is how I feel about this look. Next up, I have Nini in this green. And everything from the knees up, the detailing is amazing. In bright lights, in low light, it looks done so well. The running lines from under the bust and past the hips, I love everything about this look from the knee up. Now, when we start to get into the train and the bottom, the polka dots and the transparency, it kind of cheapens the look and looks out of place. It kind of feels like an afterthought. And I can even see some of the horse hair in this dress. So if I were to change this look, it would definitely be that bottom half because the top half is done so well. I don't know what the direction was or the thinking was on the bottom half, but I wish they would have went with a different fabric. Now back to Shoma, this was her first look. And the first thing I thought when I saw this, I said, is it by force? Like it feels for me like a waist of a bodice. The top half is interesting. It draws me in. It has a lot to work with. The bottom half lacks direction and it lacks structure for what it is. Like, is it full or is it boneless? I don't know. This bottom half really, really disappointed me. It really did. But the top half, I would love to see the designer redo this dress with a bottom half because the bottom half really annoys me. I'm sorry. Next up, I have Jamima. And now, first off, this is Beauty and Brains because she's a physiotherapist as well as an actress. And again, for me, it's the bottom half throwing me off. I don't think this look overall is bad, but it could be better and it leaves me wanting more. Everything from the bodice and that fabric going across the hip, the detail looks great. Where this look loses me is this scallop petal-like frill over the knee and the finish of the tool at the bottom. Those would be the two things that I change about this look. Otherwise, I think this is a very great look. Next up, we have Genevieve, and this one pains me because I really do like her acting. To be honest, this dress feels very last minute to me. There are too many raw edges that feel unintentional. The split in the front feels like it was done last minute and randomly cut. The hemming and the finishing on this dress make me not a fan. The Next up, I have Bemi, and she looks amazing. amazing. I want to know more about her. I believe she might have been a host. And I feel like this look, again, it gives you, the volume gives you that drama. But it's like, I want more. Like, even the ribbing detail, it's not bad, it's not great. I feel like more could have been done for this look. It's a little underwhelming for me. And next we have Stan. I don't know if this fabric is thin or what. Something about this fabric does not look love to me. It, it looks cheap. I'm sorry to say, it looks cheap to me. Now we have Eniola, and, and it's been so long since I've been on Instagram, and I'm so far removed to what's been going on, that initially I thought this was Tiana herself. She's actually wearing Tiana's place. For me, this is a lot at once. It's an overkill with great ideas. The beading and the embellishment is on point. However, I think I counted five sets of wings. Please, I'm begging, remove about three sets. And then we have the drawing at the bottom, which is made 3D. It's about, I don't know, eight more of her there. And I feel like those drawings or paintings are given far too much detail. They have crowns. Painting is like on a sign that's plastered on, plus the draping. Mbok, please, just, just remove some, please. <laughs> it's just too much for me. Next up, I have Carolina also in Tiana's place. And this is another piece that I feel like is well done, but it is entirely too much going on. Please, let's reduce to at least two elements. Like, can we pick if we do a smaller shoulder, we keep the spikes or lose the spikes, the ruffles at the bottom, the fringe wrist bracelet. Please, just pick two. Mbok. Like, please, let's just pick two or three ideas and roll with them. I feel like this is just too much crammed into one outfit. Right. This next one is by OJ. No, I will not explain. I won't explain. But to end on a positive note, I really did enjoy her look from the cultural night. I know I wasn't able to get to all the looks that were worn during this award ceremony, but let me know your favorites, your best dress, and the rest in the comments. Let's also keep it respectful. I would have to say my favorite and looks I could see myself wearing are between Vanita and her golden hour, Osa, Simi, Nana, and Uche. Those are my top looks. And with all that being said, please know these are just my opinions and this is meant to be harmless fun of us enjoying and talking fashion. And as we're able to have fun and talk about the joys of fashion, it is still all eyes on Rafa, Free Congo, Sudan, Aiti, and feel free to add anywhere else that needs more attention and support. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye guys.